Today we will learn histology of the respiratory system. Histology of respiratory system. Our respiratory system it starts with the nasal cavity this is anterior nasal aperture or you can say nostril and the nasal cavity then posterior nasal aperture or nasocona uh, sorry cona and then this is the nasopharynx here is the this is uh, nasopharynx this is oropharynx and here is the epiglottis so this is the laryngopharynx and then air enter into the larynx and here is the trachea which contains c shaped tracheal cartilage is there which is here the c is completed by the tracheolis muscle is smooth muscle and this is 20 in number this tracheal cartilage and then comes the bronchi this is trachea to here and this portion is called carina the bifurcation of trachea and this is at the level of the sternal angle here is the this is epiglottis and epiglottis comes up to the this is a leaf like and here is the this is thyroid cartilage okay and this is required up to this much is larynx okay larynx contain three paired and three unpaired cartilage that is three unpaired are the epiglottis thyroid in the cricoid and the paired cartilages are arytenoid corniculate cuneiform and sometimes 3t c8 cartilage the highline cartilage uh, often asked in the exam what are the highline cartilage and what are the elastic cartilage so highline cartilage is example is if we get the slide of the epiglottis or trachea in those case we will get the cartilaginous plate the trachea the trachea the histological slide of the trachea we can identify by the last cartilaginous plate and the, the, here is the uh, epithelium okay in which we will get the ciliated columna pseudostratified ciliated columna that is the some cells are the vessel cell or uh, don't reach up to the surface of the lumen and this is the ciliated columna and in between this there is gobble cell okay and this is uh, another cell so in the, in the trachea what will we get the cartilaginous plate the tracheal as a tracheal ring and this is the epithelium and the main thing is that it is full of goblet cell here is the goblet cell goblet cell goblet cell and in the epiglottis there is a, again there is a cartilaginous plate and both side epithelium here is the first the, some mucosa then lamina propria epithelium some mucosa lamina propria epithelium both side in between there is a cartilaginous plate and here is the epithelium towards the oral surface it is a stratified squamous the domo domo epidermal junction will be baby and the stratified squamous that is the multi-layered and the flattened cells are there and this is towards the laryngeal side it is pseudo stratified ciliated columna okay only except the upper uppermost end in which both side will be a stratified squamous in the epiglottis but in the lower two-third of the laryngeal surface there will be pseudo steadfast ciliated columnatide that is single layer but uh, all cells are not uh, reaching up to the lumen okay now what is the difference between these two cartilages this is the, in the tree here this is the hyaline cartilage and in the epiglottis this is the elastic cartilage now what is the difference between the hyaline and the elastic cartilage hyaline cartilage it is h for hyaline and it is homogeneous that we can't see the cellular details why we can't see because the the ground substance and the uh, cells they have got uh, ground substance and the fiber in the cell all these have got the same refractive index index so we can't see the 
cellular detail. Only there is a cell nest, isogenous cell nest are there and it is very faint and it has got a strongly basophilic matrix. And here is the, uh, in the epiglottis, this is the elastic cartilage in which we can see the cellular details in which the cells are arranged in a row. Okay, this is the, and what is the difference between the hyaline and epiglottis other difference that it will cause calcify up to 25 years of age but uh, the uh, elastic cartilage as the fibro and as well as the fibroelastic cartilage cartilage is of three, ty two, uh, three type that is the hyaline cartilage elastic cartilage and the fibroelastic it will calcify hyaline cartilage will calcify after 25 years but this do not except the articular cartilage. Articular cartilage is a type of hyaline cartilage, but it do not classify after 25. Okay. Now, what are the example of hyaline cartilage? It is the hyena, hyena cat art cost 10 euro. That is, hyena means hyaline cartilage, cat means required, arytenoid, and the thyroid cartilage. Required arytenoid and thyroid. Arytenoid except its apices. That is elastic. And this is the ART is articular cartilage. Cost. That is costal cartilage. 10. That is tracheal cartilage. Euro. E for epiphyseal growth plate. Okay. Now this is the epiglottis. And uh, this is uh, the elastic cartilage. And the elastic, the mnemonic is ELA. O C C A T M pin. Okay, ELA means elastic cartilage. O for epiglottis. The epiglottis is opening is somewhat like O. Yeah, here in the posterior surface of the uh, towards the posterior aspect of the tongue. This is the somewhat oval O. That's why O for epiglottis. Then corniculate, cuneiform, auditory tube, and the this is the eustrichian tube. Auditory tube or eustrichian tube both are same. But this is external auditory meatus. M for meatus. External auditory meatus. Okay. And this is pinna. All these contain the elastic cartilage. And now what are the example of the fibroelastic cartilage? This is fill. Fill IP. IP address ko bharo. Okay. F for fibroelastic cartilage. I for intervertebral disc. L for glenoid labrum. This is acetabular labrum. And this is interarticular disc. In the sternoclavicular joint and the TM joint. That is the temporomandibular. And P for pubic symphysis. Okay. The fibrocartilage. The main specific feature is that it doesn't contain the perichondrium. Okay. And. Okay. This is the main difference. Now coming to the, uh, this is bronchi, then this will convert into, this is also known as principal bronchus, then it gives secondary bronchus, then tertiary bronchus, then uh, the primary bronchiole, then uh, secondary bronchiole, then tertiary bronchiole or terminal bronchiole, then respiratory bronchiole, this is respiratory bronchiole. Then comes alveolar duct, uh, um, uh, alveolar duct, uh, antrum or atrium, alveolar sac, uh, and alveoli. This much is the branching of the respiratory tree. Okay. Now it is divided. The respiratory system is divided into conductive part and the respiratory part. Conductive part of once and conductive part is up to the terminal bronchiole and the respiratory part is from respiratory bronchiole onward that is the respiratory bronchiole then alveolar duct uh, then atrium or antrum alveolar sac and alveoli this uh, five component is also known as the respiratory unit okay and the respiratory membrane is different thing okay now this is uh, the whole respiratory system is divided into the uh, conductive part and the respiratory part. Conductive part is that which give way to the, give passes to the air. But it does many function, that is the harpic. Uh, harpic, that is the har. Har means war. War means it warm the inspired air by the vascular plexus, which is present in the submucosa and the lamina propria. P for protection of lower airway. I for the um, 
it uh, it does air conditioning of the inspired air that if the external environment is cool then it make the inspired air warmer if external environment is warm then it make the inspired air cooler that is called the inspired uh, the air conditioning and see i have forgotten okay and the respiratory part is just respiration that is uh, the exchange of o2 and co2 that's occur here now now come to the general plan of the respiratory system uh, we all know that the, in the general plan of the res, uh, git is ms ms that एम डबल एम एस करने के लिए हम लोग को बहुत अच्छे से खाना पीना होगा जी आई टी को तंदुरुस्त रखना होगा और हेयर इज द जनरल प्लान द नेमोनिक इज मस्का किसी का मस्का लगाने के लिए ऊपर नीचे करना होगा इसलिए हाफना नहीं है रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम मजबूत रखना है तो हेयर द नेमोनिक इज मस्का दैट इज द म्यूकोसा सम म्यूकोसा देन कार्टिलेजिनस प्लेट एंड देन एडवेंटिशिया एम एस C A मस्का एम म्यूकोसा इट इज अगेन मेड अप ऑफ टू थिंग्स दैट इज द एपीथीलियम एंड लेमिना प्रोक्रिया दिस इज सम म्यूकोसा दिस इज कट इज स्प्लेट इन दिस इज एडवेंटेशिया नाउ एपीथीलियम दिस इज मेड अप ऑफ फोर टाइप ऑफ सेल दैट इज द सिलियटेड कॉलोमना फर्स्ट वे वी कै आई कैन आई वुड लाइक टू से दैट इज द द आवर रेस्पिरेटरी ट्रैक द एपीथीलियम इज वेरी स्पेशलाइज एंड दे आर द सुडो स्ट्रेटिफाइड सिलियटेड कॉलोमना एपीथीलियम बट एक्सेप्ट सम प्लेसेस लाइक इन द रूफ ऑफ द नेशनल कैविटी दैट इज द ओल फैक्ट्री म्यूकोसा ओल फैक्ट्री एपीथीलियम इज देयर ओके नाउ ओरल सर्फेस ऑफ द एपीग्लोटिस एज वेल एज द अपर पार्ट ऑफ द लैरेंजियस सर्फेस ऑफ द एपीग्लोटिस oral surface of the epiglottis that is towards the trunk and the upper part of the laryngeal surface of the epiglottis it contain the stratified squamous epithelium okay now at the region of the vocal cord here lies the vocal cord true vocal cord uh, so uh, here the epithelium is stratified squamous type as well as in the respiratory bronchiole the epithelium is or you can say in the bronchiole the epithelium is uh, um, ciliated or non ciliated simple columnar to simple cuboidal epithelium okay so these are the changes in the epithelium throughout the respiratory tract now coming to the epithelium that is the typical one that is the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar in which there are four type of cells that is the ciliated columnar cell that is the length is more than the width and why it is called pseudo stratified and here is the cilia as its name itself says and why is called pseudo stratified because some cells are very short height It has got short height and it doesn't reach up to the lumen. There is all cells are lying on the uh, the resting membrane that is the basement membrane, but they do not reach up to the lumen. And in between the columnar cells, there is many goblet cell. Goblet cell is that the like the dumbbell cell. This is, the goblet. वो शराब पीने वाली जो ये होती है glass वो से कहते हैं goblet. so it is just like this and it is full of granule that is the mucus granule we stick with the mucus okay so and this is the ciliated columnar one type of cell this is another that is the goblet cell and here in between this is the basal cell or you can say stem cell which can give rise to either ciliated columnar or goblet cell and some cells are also this is d D N E S that is the diffuse neuroendocrine secretory cells. These cells secrete the neuroendocrine secretion, and those are C G S system, C G S B. That is the uh, it secretes calcitonin, calcitonin gene related peptide, and then cholecystokinin. Okay. and this g is for gastrin gastrin releasing peptide as for serotonin b for bombesin these neuroendocrine secretions are via this d dnas cell 
और यू कैन से के सेल दिस इज ऑल्सो नोन एज के सेल और कुल्सकी सेल कुल चित स्काई कुल्सकी सेल ओके नाउ कम टू द सम्यूकोसा इन विच बी पी एल जी बी पी एल जी दैट इज द ब्लड वेसल इज देयर प्लाज्मा सेल्स आर देयर लिम्फेटिक नोड्यूल्स आर देयर एंड द ग्लैंड्स आर देयर the so blood vessel this is the blood vessels and this is the plasma cell which uh, which uh, provides the primary line of defense and also there is neutrophils uh, and the lymphatic nodules are there and the um, uh, cells in the so glands that is the serum mucus type of gland okay this gland the goblet cell and the serum mucus they all uh, produce mucus as well as some Uh, serous secretion also, but mainly the mucus, and uh, these along with the cilia present some mucociliary clearance system, or you can say mucociliary escalator. It does the function of to propel the uh, dust particle away from the lower respiratory tract, and is the beating the direction of beating of cilia is towards the nasopharynx. so in order to clear and then the sputum which is filled with the dust particle is now engulfed by the git after coming here they will and the another protective mechanism is cough reflex and the another is on the second one is the mucociliary escalator system in which the cilia beat in one direction towards the nasopharynx and the mucus and trap the dust particle and then come here up to the um, oropharynx and then it is engulfed by the through the oesophagus through the git system okay so it does very important function this gland now comes the some mucosa इन द सम्यूकोसा देव नाबालिग जी नाबालिग नाबालिग ओके दिस इज द नव फाइबर ब्लड वेसल लिम्फेटिक नोड्यूस एंड द ग्लैंड ग्लैंड अगेन सेरोम्यूकस ग्लैंड एंड द नव फाइबर ओके एंड एंड दिस इज द कार्टिलेजिनस प्लेट एंड दिस इज द adventitia this is fibroelastic cartilage and it it gives way to the nerves and blood vessels neurovascular system and this is cartilage and there is a thin layer of the elastic fiber in between the in between the the this is uh, our lamina propria this is lamina propria in between the lamina propria and the submucosa like in the git the, our uh, mucosa is made up of three things that is ilm epithelium lamina propria and muscularis mucosa muscularis mucosa is a smooth muscle in the same way where is the lining of the uh, some smooth muscle is there okay and uh, in between the some mucosa and the cartilaginous plate Okay, in the mucosa and the cartilage, there lies one elastic lamina. Uh, in between the, there lies the elastic lamina. And this is the cartilaginous plate in which also there is elastic fiber. And this is also fibroelastic in nature, so also there is, and as well as the collagen fiber is there. So this is the general plan. Now this is uh, there is a deviation. deviation. when we progress to our lower respiratory tract and what are those deviation the i have uh, said about the epithelium now come to the lamina propria and the submucosa the goblet cell and the gland this there is no need of mucus mucus secretion in the respiratory passage in the respiratory portion of the respiratory tract that is the respiratory bronchial onward there is no need of goblet cell and the seromucous gland so goblet cell and the seromucous gland these are absent so the lamina propria and the submucosa will be very thin in the in the wheat okay now one thing more that is the cartilaginous plate this will disappear when we reach in the bronchiole in it is often asked in the viva that is what is the difference between the bronchus bronchus and the bronchiole 
the difference between bronchus and the bronchiole this is the bronchus where is the cartilaginous plates are there okay uh, not c shaped but the cartilaginous plate as we will far, uh, go towards the um, lower lumen bronchus then there will be the cartilaginous plate will be interrupted okay and in the bronchiole there will be no cartilaginous plate okay here uh, due to the cartilaginous plate the epithelium it is stressed over here but here is no cartilaginous plate so here is the lumen is star shaped okay like wavy wavy margin of the luminal epithelium and here is the cartilaginous plate now this is musca that is the epithelium then lamina propria this constitute the mucosa and then some mucosa then cartilaginous plate and then adventitia okay and here is the this is the epithelium then very few lamina propria will be there in which there is bprg that the blood vessel lymphatic nodule but there is no gland is there in the bronchiole okay especially the respiratory bronchiole onward okay and here the secretions uh, now what keep it distended why not it the constricted because there is presence of a smooth muscle in it a smooth muscle it lies in the crease 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 pattern here it lies in the larger bronchiole it is much wider and the crease cross pattern here it lies in the crease pose pattern but we are in the this is the respiratory bronchiole because the duct is, here is duct is interrupted by the um, the alveoli then duct then again alveoli this type of arrangement is found in the respiratory bronchiole which is a connecting link between the conductive portion and the respiratory portion so here the smooth muscle will get very uh, thin but there is and the whole lung the, the alveoli up to the alveoli there will be spoon muscle but its quantity decreases but the elastic fiber which is in the form of elastic lamina here in here in the elastic lamina it increases in quantity as we go downward towards the alveoli the lung is made up of mainly of the elastic fiber and the reticular fiber and the epithelium are there and very few lamina propria and the submucosa are there so um, in the lung there is a reticular fiber which prevent the over distension of the lung and the elastic fiber which allow the distension up to its fullest extent okay and in the lung we will discuss that room uh, one here we are we are discussing the difference between the bronchus and the bronchiole and this is the epithelium and then lamina propria and then there is uh, some mucosa as well uh, and in the mucosa and some in between the mucosa and some mucosa there is a uh, flimsy layer of the smooth muscle cell and if we look the outward then uh, this will this will present in the longitudinal fashion in the crisscross criss cross pattern okay and the elastic fiber they are uh, also in the longitudinal pattern that's why we are getting in just a scanty here and the, it is uh, like a fiber here and also in the this is the adventitia which is more made up of fiber elastic tissue and this is adventitia which is made up of fiber elastic tissue from where the and main difference is it's a uh, uh, diameter is less than one millimeter the bronchiolar diameter and it's more than one centimeter or you can say if it is less than it is a strictly followed if it is less than one millimeter diameter the luminal diameter then it is called bronchiole and is it is usually more than one centimeter and there is cartilaginous plate there is no cartilaginous plate there the lumen is uh, wide and here is uh, very narrow and it presents of uh, star shaped structure and uh, 
here the elastic fiber will be more and here the smooth muscle will be more okay and if we go through the inner to the outer aspect aspect what we will see there is the pseudo stratified bronch in the bronca pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium then comes lamina propria which has got the goblets and the in the epithelium there will be goblet cell and this in the lamina propria there is serum mucus gland then comes uh, the uh, some mucosa and in between the mucosa and some mucosa there will be a few fiber of the smooth muscle smooth muscle okay and this smooth muscle has got very fun very good function that uh, it presents a contraction and the bronchoconstriction and the uh, bronchodilatation with the help of the autonomic nervous system that is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system and uh, when it con um, during the after the expiration it contra uh, during expiration it contract so to expel the air out of the respiratory system but in case of asthma it contract for a much longer period so uh, that's why the patient feel suffocating due to the longer duration of the contraction of the smooth muscle the um, the less air is present in the alveoli less uh, oxygen carbon dioxide exchange occur due to the constant contraction of the smooth muscle this is the pathogenesis behind the asthma patient this is the function of the smooth muscle okay and uh, one thing more that i have mentioned the mucociliary clearance in the cigarette smoker the cilia get akinetic the cilia do not move akinetic cilia due to this constant cigarette smoking and sometimes this uh, and the, so the mucociliary clearance do not occur and in opposed to that action in response to that action the mucus secretion becomes more by the goblet cell as well as the serum mucus gland so there will be more secretion and the ciliary clearance is not there so and uh, due to the constant irritation of the epithelium the pseudo stratified ciliated uh, columnar epithelium will get metaplasia and it will convert into the keratinized stratified squamous type of epithelium and it will lead to carcinoma after the metaplasia so that's the reason behind the carcinoma the lung carcinoma for the cigarette smoker and there is also primary ciliary dyskinesia syndrome in the catagenous syndrome in which there is primary ciliary dyskinesia as well as the situs inversus because uh, due to the uh, non movement of the akinesia of the cilia this rotation of the gut as well as all the thoracic and the intraabdominal structure is not in its place okay now this is the difference uh, and uh, here if we go inside outward there is a epithelium that is the ciliated or non ciliated simple columnar to simple cuboidal low columnar simple low columnar to simple cuboidal type of epithelium then uh, then comes lamina propria and the submucosa which is the void of the uh, devoid of the serum mucus gland and epithelium is devoid of goblet cell so there will be no glands uh, there will be no cartilage after that there is no cartilaginous plate and there is uh, a smooth muscle in between the lamina propria and the submucosa but the smooth muscle which lies in the criss cross pattern in the longitudinal axis and that will be uh, less than the bronchus but the elastic fiber which lies in between the submucosa and the cartilaginous plate in there but here the submucosa and the uh, and the adventitia here lies the elastic fiber and this is more in quantity compared to the bronchiole i mean bronchus this is bronchus and this is bronchiole okay and uh, in the lung if we um, if we got the slide of the lung there will be intrapulmonary bronchus as well as the intrapulmonary bronchiole 
so this is all about the bronchus and bronchiole now come to the lung parenchyma and it is made of of um, there will be intrapulmonary bronchus and bronchiole as well as the alveolar epithelium alveolar epithelium there is uh, this is one alveoli this is one alveoli and there is intra alveolar pores are there in between the two alveolar sac so that the pressure inside the whole respiratory system will be equalized there will be equal uh, intra uh, alveolar pressure will be there okay and one thing more in the respiratory uh, uh, respiratory membrane the respiratory exchange occur in between the five layer that is the uh, alveolar epithelium then alveolar basement membrane then uh, few uh, the few connective tissue in between then comes the uh, the basement membrane of the capillary then capillary endothelium this is the the respiratory membrane through which the exchange of here is the capillary and this is the alveoli so the o2 will go here and the co2 will return back okay during the process of the uh, so that we can get the oxygen by the capillaries so this is the respiratory membrane and this is intra alveolar pores are there and what about the alveolar epithelium this is alveolar epithelium and there is elastic fiber and the reticular fiber in them and there are three type of alveolar cells in the epithelium this is the type 1 pneumocyte type 1 pneumocyte is very it is simple squamous type that is a flattened cell and the nucleus is um, flattened and as well as uh, um, it is at one side and, and gives a proper space for the uh, and all the organelle are pushed at one side nucleus as well as all the cellular organelle and provide the surface for the exchange of oxygen in the carbon dioxide okay and uh, and this is simple squamous and they are 95 percent out of 100 and uh, sorry it is uh, yeah 95 percent of the cells are the type 1 epithelium cell the second type of cell is the type 2 pneumocyte or you can say this is the uh, one thing i have forgot mentioned that the clara cell here um, in the there is no goblet cell but the how come this is possible to widen the the bronchioles there is a smooth muscle which uh, contract and the dilate and also there is clara cell in place of goblet cell there is clara cell the, what is the function of clara cell in the uh, the clara cell or you can say club cell okay it uh, produces a bronchiolar surfactant which made it to open as well as it prevents the bronchiole from the oxidative pollutants and it prevents the inflammation the clara cell very important and it is present in the bronchiole only and it also provides the defensive system as well as produce the bronchiolar surfactant and made it open in spite in absence of the cartilaginous plate there is no cartilaginous plate but it remains patent due to the presence of the clara cell now um, this is the type 1 uh, uh, type 2 pneumocyte which is a simple cuboidal type and it produces the pulmonary surfactant this is bronchiolar surfactant and this is pulmonary surfactant and this is simple cuboidal uh, type and this is also called septal cell because here the exchange occur and so there is uh, epithelium capillary they are capillary and it produces the respiratory unit but the hair is the alveolar pores are there the alveolar septa is there there is no gas exchange occur it constitute only three percent of the cell and so this is also known as septal cell and here the cytoplasm is arranged like a constricted lamina concentric lamina and that is called the lamellar body and the another function of the type 1 epithelium is to uh, is to exchange the dust particle it uh, dust particle it entrap dust particle and uh, deliver it to type 3 pneumocyte okay type 3 pneumocyte which i will discuss later on one function of type 1 pneumocyte is this and this is type 2 which produces the pulmonary surfactant
and it contain the lamellar body okay and it is only 3% now come to the type 3 pneumocyte which is also known as alveolar macrophage uh, alveolar macrophage uh, which is also known as dust cell huh? or heart failure cell because in case of heart failure in the capillary in the capillary there are the red blood cell is uh, f there is uh, there is leakage from the capillary endothelium and uh, there is uh, it is engulfed by the it is engulfed by the alveolar macrophage and it is full of hemosiderae and it is only in case of the uh, heart failure due to the which result into the pulmonary over congestion and the pulmonary hypertension there will be pulmonary hemorrhage and the blood cells are engulfed by the alveolar macrophage and it will uh, present the heart failure cells it will known as okay and it engulfed dust particle that's why it also called the dust cell uh, so it produces the immune system so this is all the three type cells of in the lung what else so this is all about the lung histology thank you